TV once again from Australia, from All Energy Event. And now we are with the special guest, actually, with the best customer of Solar Juice, with uh, Juan from Smart, smart commercial, commercial Solar. That's the one. So, uh, why you are so smart, Juan? Well, I, I guess uh, we, that's, that's part of the name, but um, you know, we, we ultimately have the customer's desire at heart. We, we look very deeply into the data and we study each customer as a unique uh, situation. And we apply a lot of intelligence around our solution. We're not just simply throwing solar panels uh, and we're not simply just using solar as a financial product. We're really trying to improve our customers' uh, entire energy mix. And uh, so we provide solutions like power factor correction, solar, and we're doing some interesting things with uh, the products that we're using. Um, and hopefully, we deliver uh, for every one of our customers something of value. So, what is the you know, like the product that you are delivered to customers? Oh, we did a lot of soul searching, and we, we could say that we sell solar power systems, or we could say that we sell energy savings, uh, or we could sell a financial product. But ultimately, what I think we actually sell is a relationship with our client. Uh, the way in which we uh, install our products and we carry on with ongoing monitoring and, and these value-added services long term, we're really actually providing a relationship which is hopefully going to continue to evolve as, as our sector ev evolves into batteries and, and you know, those customers that we might have sold to five or ten years ago, we're now going to be selling a new product and, and providing more uh, benefit to them over a period of time. So we had uh, just you know very short discussion about you know about uh, this 200 billion US dollars yeah. that eventually would be invested in storage. In this case, you could uh, go out uh, you know of the grid. Yes? Yeah, effectively. So so what I did, I I looked at how the national energy market is currently working, and and we did some analysis over our total consumption. We applied a few. Um, uh, data sets to it and we said okay well what can we actually affect right now and what will we affect in the next few years and uh, th and then we had to look at it just as a financial product and for 200 billion US dollars we could effectively take the grid 80 percent um, 80 percent off the grid exactly. if that could actually make sense yeah because you know uh, Rami told me that you I should speak with you also, you know, not about, you know, like your product and stuff, but you are a more visionary guy, yes? Well, uh, what, what I'm trying to understand is, that for my business, where are we in three years, where are we in five years, and, uh, and where are we in ten years? No, and in I 15 years, we will be 100% of renewables. Huh? Honestly, I believe that's, it's, it's really possible. The whole industry here is, uh, everyone involved in renewables knows it's possible. What we do need is a little bit of a change. And Australia's never lacked the technology. We've never lacked the will. We've lacked policy. Uh, and and some, somewhat we've lacked vision, I guess, is, is the thing. But when you come to an event like this and, and, and you know, people like uh, Solar Juice are aware of it, we have a vision for the future. I think if we get behind a vision, it can be achieved. Um, I can see a very near future, three years' time, Daytime energy could be abundant because there's so much solar coming in. Uh, that's going to drop the price of daytime energy. What does that mean for us? Well, it means that we need to start making money in other times of the day, uh, so we need storage. And then over the next three, three years after that, we, we're going to reach a certain amount of saturation, uh, and within 10 years, we'll be 80% off the grid. So you know, if you want, uh, I, this is my first time in Australia. Sure. Uh, like learning process. Welcome, yes? welcome. And I would like to ask you, you know, uh, do you observe not only, you know, the change of the paradigm and also the thinking of people, of us Australians uh, towards energy, but also, you know, like uh, mobility, you know, like ownership uh, towards uh, sharing, you know, do you observe this? Yeah, so ultimately, uh, Australians are somewhat conservative in their approach to energy. Um, and there's, there's, there's a strong base that's tied to traditional sources for some reason. I think it's just, once again, a lack of vision. Um, and uh, things like mobility, the transport sector, will obviously have a big part to play. For me personally, do I see that as being a major force in the next three to five years? No. 
because Australia's um, the way in which we buy vehicles and, and cars, the average age of a vehicle in Australia is 10 years. Um, last year, I think the total number of EVs sold was about 1,100 EVs. So the uptake of EVs is very small um, compared to what it could be in, say, Europe. Um, and there's a number of factors for that. But I think the evolution's always related in Australia to money. And something's just happened in the national energy market in the last eight months that will not be forgotten and which will continue to propel us forward. And that is basically the decommissioning of some coal, which has sent the price up. And that price has really affected a lot of businesses. Businesses are starting to move on this. And now that businesses are starting to move and they represent around about 75% of the load on the NEM, now that those, uh, the way of thinking in, in commerce has changed to recognise we need to do something about this, we can't rely on the old system, the new system is cheaper. So from now on we should experience at least uh, uh, for the next three years exponential growth. Okay. So also yesterday I think you liked our discussion here. Yeah, yeah of course. At the party. Yeah. And uh, as you might remember I said that uh, Solar is not, you know, in our opinion, it's not uh, B2B, B2C, but it's edge to edge. Edge to edge. How does it work actually in uh, Australia? Uh, human to human. That's exactly how business is done in Australia. I think um, uh, some countries don't have that same sort of uh, way of doing business. I, I think ultimately we do, but human to human relations. What we're selling is a relationship. I from Solar Juice as an example. It's because. You know, it's a relationship. They work hard to help me get to where I need to go, and I'll then respect that and be loyal to them and continue to buy from them. I understand they need to make profit. They understand I need to make profit. Together, we work hard to drive efficiency in each other's businesses. And ultimately, we're doing the same thing for our end user as well. We can't expect to um, charge an exorbitant amount for what we do. We need to make profit. Our customer understands that and we're trying to make them savings. So I think Australia is very much tied to relationships. I think we understand that. I think any business who comes into Australia and doesn't understand the value of a relational selling, they're not going to do very well. And so this is advice for the international viewers. Oh, 100%, yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been in the solar industry now for 10 years and I've seen people come in and go, the people who have stayed are the people who believe in, the, in, in relationships. Okay, so the last question, uh, because yesterday uh, you made le vo voluntary speech. Uh, that's right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I just would like to ask you uh, what you said yesterday about solar juice, yes, because uh, we are also invited by Rami, by Andrew, yeah. Yeah. and as I said yesterday, you know, if all the guys in Australia are like them, you know, I will be coming very often. Yeah? <laughs> so what, well, what is your feedback about solar yeah, juice? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it, uh, and I said it last night, uh, it, it's something, it's a core belief of mine. Um, you know, I started Smart Commercial Solar uh, in February of 2012 and, you know, I, I was nothing. I didn't exist. I, I had, yes, I had some reputation in the industry, but really, um, Andrew and Rami, uh, the Solar Juice company, they believed in what I could do. They believed in my potential future. And uh, they were prepared to help me get to where we are today. And, where we are today, we're, uh, I believe we're the third largest EPC in Australia and commercial. Um, and that is because of people like Andrew and Rami, really Solar Juice, have believed in us, they've supported us, and even when things aren't necessarily perfect, they've you know, helped us get to the next level. Every step of the way, all it is is a phone call away, and I, I need help, can you help me? Yes we can, of course we can, and away we go. And, uh, you know, it's hard to find um, that sort of relationship. And once you do find it, I think you need to treat it like a, a precious jewel. You hold on to it, you protect it, and you, you look after it. And, and uh, honestly, without, without their help, uh, I'd probably still be uh, selling together residential. we are stronger. Yeah? 100%. Okay, so thumbs up for Solar Juice. Thank you. And thank you so much. No, I really appreciate and, it. And uh, I can assure you that this is not, uh, it's my first time, but not the last. Not the last time. I think we're going to see each other over in uh, Shanghai next to Yes, exactly. Yeah. So thank you so much. That was Solar TV TV together with uh, Huan, who is uh, founder, yes? Founder, founder. of uh, uh, Smart Commercial Solar. Yes. Uh, one of the most faithful customers of Solar Juice. Of course. And, and friend. Yeah, indeed. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you so much.